today we are tackling severe water spots. So if you guys check out this Scion XB, this thing has some pretty atrocious wa water spots right here. They're pretty bad, they're very etched in, and you guys will see right now once we start cleaning it up, showing you guys how bad they are. So the first thing that we're gonna do is clean the glass. So I'm gonna make my way over here to my little table where I have everything set up. And right here, we're gonna go ahead and grab our streak-free glass cleaner first. We're gonna go ahead and grab one of our blue workhorse microfiber towels. And we're just gonna go ahead and clean this up very quickly. So we're gonna open it up to the spray, spray it down, set that down, and then we're just simply gonna wipe it away with our blue microfiber towel. And I want you guys to just pay attention just how bad the water spots are. Like normally something like these, you know, most water spots will come off with the glass cleaner, but there's just some times where these water spots don't get removed and you have more etched in water spots. And we do have remedies for it, such as our heavy duty water spot remover gel. In this case, I have opted to pull out a polisher simply because of how severe these water spots actually are on the surface. And I'll show you guys just how bad they are right now after we clay it. So the next step is clean. So we've already cleaned it. Now we're gonna clay the surface. Now we're gonna grab our heavy duty clay bar here. So I'm gonna open it up. And as you guys can see, the heavy duty clay bar has these plastic sleeves that you wanna go ahead and remove. Now, whenever you do a clay bar, never use the entire chunk, simply because if you drop it, the whole piece is gonna be rendered useless. So always use a section at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull off a little piece. It's extremely sticky, as you guys can see. So we're just gonna pull that off. And if you guys want, you can actually put the sleeves back on. That way it doesn't stick inside the packaging of your clay bar here. And just like that, it doesn't stick all inside. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is actually grab the clay bar and grab some clay lubricant. Then we're gonna make our way back to the glass here. So now that we have our clay lubricant, we're gonna simply spray it directly onto the glass. Now, one of the great things about clay luber is that it's a synthetic lubricant. So this is not only gonna slick in the surface, but it's gonna make sure that we don't cause any kind of abrasion to the surface. Now, the great thing about clay bars is that you can actually use them on paint and on glass, as well as any kind of smooth, glossy exterior plastics like headlights. You can even use it on wheels as well. And it's extremely slick, as you guys can see. It does an incredible job of just gliding left and right. And whenever you're clay barring, that's what you're looking for. You don't want to kind of have any kind of resistance here just because if you have any kind of like rough feel or you have a little patch where you don't have any kind of clay luber applied, then you can mar the surface. Now on glass, it's a little bit different just because, you know, it doesn't have a final clear coat or anything. It's just kind of the final raw material itself. But if you don't, if you are using this on paint, then you can uh, mar the paint if you're just being rough with it. So the next thing that we're gonna do is grab our microfiber towel and buff off the residue of the clay luber. And again, as you guys can see, not much of a difference here, but the biggest thing here is that now we are fully prepared to polish. Now, whenever you do polish, you wanna make sure that the surface is clean and is fully prepped. So as you guys can see, not much in terms of a difference of the water spots, but we're definitely now in a better position than we were before, simply because this is nice, it's smooth, and we can polish it without any kind of contaminants getting on our pad, on the machine, and then scratching up the glass. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna move our way back to the table here. I'm gonna start grabbing all of the things that I need to polish, such as the machine polisher, and we also have our polishing pad conditioner. This little piece right here, I'm just gonna put it on top so I know that it's used. Set that down. And then right here we have our machine. So we have our polishing pad conditioner. We're gonna move out the way. Then we also have our V36, which is a light cutting polish. Now V36 is great because it has micro abrasives. It's gonna break down and refine the surface to get rid of those water spots. In this case, since on the, we're working on the glass, you can also use it on your paint as well, along with headlights, glossy B pillars, and much more. So I'm gonna mask the surface first. So I'm gonna grab some tape just to make sure that we don't damage any kind of surrounding areas such as the rubber seals and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. And I'm gonna just simply slide this underneath this rubber seal. And I like to kind of mask it this way. That way I don't get it on the paint and it's more on the actual rubber where it needs to be. We're just gonna go ahead and push that along to the bottom. And then we're just gonna wrap that over the rubber seal right here, as you guys can see. And then again, we're just gonna mimic this thing all the way around, especially this little piece right here as well. This is all rubber, so we wanna make sure that the compound doesn't get on there. I'm sorry, the polish, since V36 is a light cutting polish. For those of you guys that don't know, a compound 
it's just a more aggressive form of a polish. So if you're ever wondering what the difference between them are, that's basically the biggest thing. So a compound's gonna cut more, a polish is gonna refine more. So if you're looking more for shine and to remove micro imperfections, then you're gonna wanna go with the polish. And that's why we're using that today. All right, so now that that's out the way, we can come back to the table and grab everything that we need, such as our machine polisher. I'm gonna grab some pad conditioner. Now pad conditioner, you can actually spray before or after applying the polish onto your pad. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray it right now. That way I don't have to carry another product over there. Two sprays, that's all you need. And then you can go ahead and grab your V36, shake it up, and then open up the spout here. And then we're gonna apply about four drops. Normally, we recommend going with like five drops on uh, the size of the pad since this is a five inch pad. In this case, since it's a smaller area, I'm just only applying four drops. One, two, three, four. And then we can go ahead and grab one of our microfiber towels here and then make our way to the vehicle. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in real quick. Set that down. And then the next thing that we're gonna do now is actually blot this onto the section that we're gonna be working in. So in this case, I'm gonna blot it out on this entire piece of glass. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is turn it on to speed setting one to spread out the product. That way it's not all clumped into one section. As you guys saw, that took no more than 10 seconds simply because you're not working in the product yet. You're just spreading it out. So right now is where the fun begins. So right now I'm gonna turn on this uh, machine to the highest speed setting and then we're gonna thoroughly work in the product until it becomes clear. And you'll know that because it'll become clear and it'll be a lot smoother for you to kind of work it in. We're gonna go left, right, up, down, cross hatch motion until it fully becomes clear. And I'll be right back with you guys to show you the results. All right guys, now that we're done fully working it in, we're gonna put our machine down for a second, wipe off the polish and inspect the results. Now, you guys saw just how bad the water spots on this glass were. Now one thing is that there's a huge difference already in terms of the overall clarity and the water spots themselves. As you guys can see, there's a very big patch right here in the middle where it looks great. On the other hand, these upper areas and the areas that I wasn't really able to get to with the machine aren't looking too hot, but that's completely okay because we can still hand polish those right there. But in terms of the overall quality from what you see right here in the middle towards like some of the lower areas or even like this other piece for which we haven't polished yet, you can definitely tell a huge difference in terms of the clarity. The water spots are now gone and it looks great. It looks how it should be. All right guys, so for the areas that we weren't able to cover with the machine, we're not gonna be using our orange HexLogic hand pad. Now these are great for getting into any kind of hard to reach areas that your machine polisher can't no normally get into. And it's also gonna be great to get underneath this little visor right here, which we aren't able to remove, but we're just gonna work around it. So we're gonna apply a few drops of V36 onto our applicator here. Same thing, I'll do about four. Set this down. And then you would use this the exact same way you use your machine polisher. So you can just go ahead and go left and right, up and down, focus on the areas that you wanna get into, such as the edges. As you guys saw, the machine polisher was great to cover the majority of like the main part of the glass. But in this case, since the edges are also very neglected as well, we're just gonna take our time to make sure that the edges are well taken care of. 
That way we have crystal clear glass. So we're just gonna go ahead and finish this right up. And then once we're done polishing out all these water spots and imperfections, we'll be right back with you guys for the final step, which is protecting your glass. Now that we're completely done working at the polish, removing it, and our glass is back to crystal clear, now it's time to protect it. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our HydroView, which is a ceramic glass cleaner and coating in one. So for those of you guys that haven't heard about our HydroView, that's it right there in all its beauty and glory. Now, like I mentioned, HydroView is a ceramic glass cleaner and coating at the same time. So it doubles as two products in one. So in this case, we don't need to worry about cleaning the glass because we've already cleaned it, we've clayed it, and we polished it to perfection. Now all we have to do is coat it. So this product can be used both ways. So you can use it as a maintenance in between cleanings or right now when you wanna go ahead and freshly coat your glass. And it's also very easy to use. All you have to do is simply spray it directly onto the glass itself. And then you simply just wanna wipe it off like any other glass cleaner. It's that easy to use. Just wipe away any residue and then also come back with the dry microfiber towel or the opposite side of your microfiber towel just to buff off any excess residue or any kind of grime left behind and also to buff in that nice little layer of ceramic protection onto your glass. And just like that, you're basically all good. It's a very quick and easy to use product. Now, one of the benefits of having a product like this on your glass is obviously it's extreme hydrophobic protection that you would expect from a ceramic coating now on your glass. So whenever it rains, all the water is going to beat up and just uh, repel off the glass itself. Along with any kind of other contaminants that make their way onto your glass like dirt, dust and debris, it's going to have a nice slick feel. So it's going to reduce a lot of those contaminants from sticking overall. That way your glass is cleaner for much longer. And last but not least, one of my personal favorite reasons why I love HydroView is because it has anti-fogging agents that actually help reduce the amount of fog that builds up on your glass. For all you guys out there who are driving around in the cold months, you guys already know how much of a pain it is to wait for your heater to defrost your glass. In this case, this is going to help reduce that overall. So not only are you shining to the best of your potential, but you also have the best clarity at all possible times and just like that we are completely done with this video and showing you guys how to remove hard water stains from your glass if you guys enjoyed make sure to always leave a like subscribe if you haven't done so already and we're always interested in hearing you guys ideas for video so make sure you leave them in the comment section below and while you're there why not leave a rating on how great i did on removing the water spots on this glass if you guys want to pick up any of the products that we use in today's video, there will be linked in the description below. You can pick them up on our website, chemicalguys.com, or at your local Detail Garage store. As always, my name is Joey. This is Chemical Guys Detail Garage. We'll see you next time.